Sure, how do you calculate it? I ask my niece. Of course you do. Oh, I've only seen it given once, actually. Ricky comes up with some kind of explanation yeah. that's outside of his field and the surgeon says there's the orange sheet thing in the tube. We need to have. Just be mindful of not pushing things in the exam too far. Into. There are two ways they work. One is... Hello, another episode of Scrubbing In. Back in with another critical care one. Another critical topic care. Topic we all love. It took us a month to go through critical care when we were revising. Yeah, and then we go to chapter two. Um, and, and then by the end, it's like, oh, wow, I have to go through the whole of Upper GI in like three days. <laughs> but critical care, there's some areas that are going to be quite important, isn't it? Well, this, everything we're saying, of course, this, this is never about making you uh, a critical care specialist, which is just as well. It's, all, it's just about having a... Firm approach. Pros. Yeah, it was Firm a real... In the context of a surgical patient. So today we're going to talk about what, though? We're going to talk about local anesthetic. Okay, let's do it. Again, very common, comes up, and it's something that you don't need to know a huge amount about, you'd be pleased to know, but what, do, what are local anesthetics? So local anesthetics are an irreversible, uh, are a reversible. Yeah, good start. Lock. They are, should be reversible. Should be reversible. A reversible. I don't know what dentist you go to, but uh, yeah, <laughs> get another one. Another one. <laughs> so they're a reversible blockage of, new, uh, of neurotransmission of pain signals. Um, and they work in two ways, yeah. either blockage of the sodium channels intracellularly. Uh, that's the, so the local anesthetic molecule penetrates the cell wall of the neuron and blocks the sodium channel uh, on the inside of the cell. And that stops the pain transmission alongside the root of the nerve. Yeah. The other way is the local anesthetic penetrates the cell wall and causes swelling and expansion of the cell wall, which further disrupts the sodium channel along the length. Well, very nicely done and that's how basic you want to keep it because the examiner themselves is not entirely going to know how it works what you want to do what you, what you want to say is something that's very clear just like that very simply there are two ways they work one is they go they go across the there. phospholipid membrane that's the kind of key thing with phospholipid membrane into the neuron and then they they cause and they block, they disrupt the activity of the sodium channel. Yeah, they become charged. So they start off not having a charge. They go across the membrane, become charged, and block the sodium channel, thereby increasing the threshold you need for the action potential for this for the nerve to fire. Uh, wow! It. Did your brain hurt when you got the access yeah, year one memories? This is what happens when you read chapter one and then the next page afterwards, yeah. which we never did. But then the second way is to actually integrate itself into the phospholipid membrane, so not crossing it, but it causes an expansion. And incidentally, this is how this is why local anesthetics don't work as well in the context of infection because because of they lose their ionization and then penetrate uh, the ionization to act inside yeah so you for, for for those two mechanisms to work you need the molecule to not be ionized now if you've got an acidic environment like you do in they become infection ionized. they become ionized they become ionized get charged they get repelled so they can't oh, cross can't the membrane the cell membrane or integrate itself excellent that's now that we've done advanced kind of GCSE level chemistry, we can then move on to talk about. It's remarkable the advances in the 80s, Alan, isn't it? That's when you did your GCSEs. O levels, <laughs> yeah. O levels. Yeah. On the, on the see through thing. Of, but, but nowadays, you can just go online and just print up the certificates for which the same exactly. thing. Exactly. But. Uh, <laughs> Tell me about the uses that we use it. What kind of context do we use it in? Kind of so you can use local anesthetic in day case surgery. Yep. You can use it as a supplement to improve your recovery. Yep. Following a general anesthetic. So turn a laparoscopic operation to a day case operation because yep. of the adequate use of local anesthetic. Um, you can perform major operations or intermediate operations with local anesthetic, such as an obstructed femoral and guadal hernia, for yep. example. Or a very limited cecectomy or limited appendicectomy. Yeah, if you have to pushing. Yeah, pushing uh, absolutely. But these are the kind of you may think, well, why are they going off tangent a bit? But these are the kind of things that they may ask you about. Like, what context have you used them in? And yeah, of course, you know, day case, live permas, and so on. But just remember, there be a there may be a group of patients who can't have a general anaesthetic or even spinal, or for for whatever reason, uh, elderly, frail patients with heart failure and so on, and and therefore in a context. Of a small umbilical hernia or, or inguinal hernia, you may be able, that oh, may be a one well. anesthetic. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Now, sometimes you mix uh, the local anesthetic with adrenaline. What are the good things about that, and what are the downsides about? 
the good things about that is adrenaline is a vasoconstrictor. It benefits you as a surgeon for two things. Number one, it reduces the perfusion of the area that you're working on, and it flush reduces the decomposition and the flushing away of the local anesthetic from your operating. Yeah, so it maintains the local anesthetic in the area for the longer. Concentration for longer. So you can give more. And the other option is that you can give more. And the other thing is that adrenaline keeps your surgical field dry, so you can do the operation. Just so that you don't have not from experience. Uh, yeah, that's yeah, a problem. No, 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 no. <laughs> There's never a problem with you, I'm sure. Never yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So there's two things exactly. When, when, when is the time that you do not want to use it? And this is not like allergy. We're talking about you do not want so to use adrenaline you, you, in surgical fields where they're perfused by an end artery, so uh, digits. Yeah, renal really. blocks. Exactly. You don't want to use it then because, of course, there's a risk of ischemia. Ischemia. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that's the local answer. Now, there's obviously different ones we use, a short acting, a longer acting. The short acting we commonly use... Lidocaine. Lidocaine, xylocaine, usually 1%, fine. Uh, How do you deliver local anesthetic? Uh, in a box. And then in box. Box. Amazon. <laughs> uh, so either injected subcuta uh, subcutaneously yeah. or uh, you can spray, for example, an OGD. Yeah, so it's, it's the topical agents. Topical agents. They're injection agents and... Anything there, else? I think that's it for us. You can give IV, but that's not you. I mean, you could do brea blood, but that's not really as many of the orthopedic surgeons that do that and so on. It's not so much in our specialty, but you can give local anesthetics via a variety of ways. You can give um, intravenous, subcutaneous, intramuscular, intraarticular, um, mm. topical agents. Yeah. Creams? Intraperitoneal. Yeah. yeah. Intraperitoneal. You can, absolutely. Um, for example, lap coli. So, you know, I, I, I do. There is some evidence. That works, and some evidence that doesn't, depending on what trial you were, but 1% lidocaine after a lap coli sprayed over the liver bed. I don't know. I don't have any strong evidence to support it, but it, it, it could potentially work. But yeah, okay, so then you've got lidocaine, the short-acting ones. Then you've got things that are a bit longer-acting, things like... Commonly used. Okay. Yeah, in the UK, that's mainly what we use, and a bit longer-acting. Fine. You need to know a little bit about the duration of action of each one but not something that's going to be tested pretty extensively. How do you classify local anesthetic? So the, depending on the chemical structure, so there's the, the you've got some that are, uh, they're all bound to an ester in the middle, and then they've got an amine or an amide group. They're, there's, no, so there's a... Um, we've got hydrophilic and a hydrophobic, you've got a lipophilic. It's lipophilic um, amide. Yep. And uh, an ionic amine at the end, and that's the bit that does the work. And yep. they're bound together by an ester, yeah, or an amide. Yeah, and that's and and that's how you classify. Them. Essentially, they've all what they've got in common is they've all got nitrogen as the main base. Then it's a case of is it attached to carbon hydrogen and hydrogen or carbon oxygen? Come. Let's see chemistry, I guess. It's coming back <laughs> O levels. <laughs> there you go. So esters are um, old school things: cocaine, cocaine. Things like that. Yeah, so but the ENT surgeon still will, would use some of those in terms of on some the of the patients and themselves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can't possibly comment on that, but they all they, they, they do get used. Um, and even the spray that we use in OG, that is largely based on that, isn't it? It's very quick acting, very quickly absorbed, but also wears off quite quickly as well. Okay, good. So we've got the local anesthetics. Uh, calculations are always a bit of an issue. How do you calculate it? I ask my anesthetist. Of course you do. Oh, uh, the, the good thing with that, the good thing with that is they usually shout out a number and just go, yeah. Uh, uh, they go sister. What? what Wait, wait, what she said, you know, what you said. Uh, Again, no, brain to the brain. Because they know that we never double check anyway, you know, but um, it, it, it's, you, I've never really heard of somebody having to calculate in a part to the dose. No, There's not There's different yet. ways of doing it. Not yet, maybe after this episode. That might yeah, exactly. Like, so how little surgeons know yeah. when to introduce it. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it. Yeah. it works. So we may get a whole bunch of people into trouble, but um, there is there are different calculation methods. Uh, MedCalc is the best way. MedCalc. Yeah. <laughs> But if you want to do pen and paper, there's different ways of doing it. And some works just for lidocaine that you can do in your head, and some works universally. Essentially, universally, the number of mils you need to use equals the dose of the drug per kilogram times the weight of the patient divided by the concentration. You won't really be asked exactly how to, but just have an idea as to um, how, how to do that. It's something that makes sense to you. Complications? Complications. Okay, so the... The main complication is things like one, it may not work. Why well, it may not work is because you've not given enough. Do, you've left it in the box and then delivered it. Yeah, it may not work. You've not given it enough. Other complications? You give too much. Too much? Toxicity. Toxicity can mean that you have either got a block on, which again, in our specialty, we don't really use blocks. No. 
uh, or it could be really miscalculated, drug error, the dose concentration is much higher. Fine. Acidic environments, like we already talked about, usually in the context of infection. That doesn't mean it doesn't work at all, it just means it may not be as good. Okay. So always test the skin. We gave it in a vessel and went back to the heart and the kidneys. We went to the vessel. Brain. And this is one thing that people go to the dentist sometimes and go, oh, I'm allergic to local anesthetic. They're not. It's because they've been given adrenaline. It's gone into, they've got a bit of a palpitation. They've got a bit of sweatiness and they, they, they think they're allergic. Not true. There's an antidote? There is an antidote. I can't remember it. It's lipid emulsion. That's it. Lip lipid emulsion. Lipid emulsion. Is the GP training? Yeah. Not bad. Well, Academic. We... Only the only the coroner and the judge know why he knows that, you know, that, 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 that as a GP he that so think, and we're not going to explore that further because of the accessory. But um, yes, it is emotion. Exactly. I've only seen it given once, actually. That's the orange thing that they keep mixing in. See, this is it. This is this is why we became surgeons. Yeah. I think he comes up with some kind of explanation yeah. that's outside of his field, and the surgeon says it's the orange cheat thing in the tube, and he's rejected. Yeah. Yes. Hopefully it'll be the right orange tube, but you know, yeah. not squash. Or, or it just looks like mango lassi in the key. <laughs> maybe it was squash. <laughs> but yeah, that's the antidote. Uh, so you may be asked that. Um, but that's really it. It's it's it'll, it'll be usually in the context of another kind of scenario. Are you doing a lipoma or, or you're doing some kind of sebaceous or, system. or a hernia? Yeah. Uh, just be mindful of not pushing things in the exam too far in terms of what you can do. Uh, the other context will be used in, uh, or rather it'll be discovered in, is, is ultrasound guided blocks, so sh rick the sheath blocks, or when you've done a laparotomy, for example, uh, and you know, there's pain, rectus sheath pain catheters. catheters, yeah, exactly. They, there's, there's good evidence that work well. Yep. And they may ask, what's the advantage? Well, the advantage is that you may require less post-operative uh, analgesia systemic, especially opiates. Better mobility, so, less PCA need. Uh, enhanced recovery in an emergency setting. Excellent. And that's a major can of worms, you know. Yeah, but it may be in that, because one of your stations may be a five minute station on day, the principles of day key surgery, yeah. which we'll talk about some other time. Which is a good idea, actually. Yeah. yeah. I think that's enough. Yeah. That's it.